Today we're talking about how to not get bored in your daily Bible study. How to read the boring parts of the Bible and not want to afterwards quit your daily Bible study. I have had a daily Bible study for years now and I love spending time with the Lord. Now don't get me wrong, some days I do miss, but you know what I mean. Pretty much every single day of the year I dive into God's word and I pray and I journal and it has been such a blessing. But the biggest thing I hear from people, one of the biggest questions I get is, how do you read the boring parts of the Bible? How do you not get bored in your daily Bible study? To top all that off, I'm a pastor's wife and I'm a mom in seminary. So if I'm not just spending my quiet time with the Lord or studying for seminary or helping my husband in pastoral work, I'm making YouTube videos about Bible studies. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. <laughs> Sorry, if you guys can't tell, I'm a little sick. and I've got like a cold or something. <clears throat> anyway, so today I wanted to share four tips of how to not get bored in your daily Bible study, how to stay consistent and for it to continually feel fresh and new and fun and encouraging and motivating. If we see in John 4, when Jesus is sitting at the well with this brokenhearted, weary woman, he says, let me turn to it real quick. Jesus tells her, but whoever drinks the water that I give him, will never be thirsty again. The water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up into eternal life. When we dive into God's word, when we truly taste and see that the Lord is good, we will not walk away bored. So very first tip, let's dive on in, ready? You ready? First tip. So the very first tip on how to not get bored in your daily Bible study is to look for Jesus in the passage. Whether you're reading through the Bible and you're stuck in Leviticus, or if you're in some random Old Testament prophet book, or if you're just confused and you actually like don't understand what you're reading, you can always find Jesus in the text. So what I mean by that is that many people like me are covenant theologians. And so we believe that the Bible is a promise book, a covenant book. And so we see that there are covenants that span from the Old Testament into the New Testament, the story of God redeeming his people. And so he makes promises at the very beginning with Adam and Eve and fulfills them and is still fulfilling them to us today. And so what you can do, no matter what text you're looking at, you can literally even sit down on Google and just say, Jesus in Leviticus da, da 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 and we see okay like let's use Leviticus for example a lot of Leviticus is talking about um if you make this sin or if you happen to touch a dead animal then you have to make this kind of sacrifice and you have to wash your hands this certain way and you have to go sit in this tent for this many blah, blah, blah. and it's all these like specifics and it's like boring right well how to not get bored in your daily bible study while you're reading through Leviticus is to see that Jesus is in that that Jesus was the atonement for it all. And when you're reading through Leviticus, all the very many long pages and pages of Leviticus, daily after you finish your reading for that day, you can pray, thank you God that I do not have to do that because of Jesus. Thank you God that Jesus died for my sins because I would spend all day making sacrifices. And we see Jesus in any passage, even though he hadn't even come to the world yet, because in Leviticus, all throughout the scriptures, we either see the need for him or him coming and fulfilling the scriptures, fulfilling the need and dying on the cross for our sins. My second tip is just to go in depth, make it an in-depth Bible study. So look up commentaries, buy a few commentaries, read online just articles. My favorite thing to do is literally just to get on Google and type in um, whatever passage I'm in. So we just read um, John 4. Type in John 4, the Gospel Coalition. That is like one of my favorite resources is the Gospel Coalition and you can type that in. You can use the YouVersion Bible app. You can use um, the RTS app. I'll link all these things down below. You can buy books off of Amazon or ebooks about the topic. There's so many different fictional books written about Bible characters like Redeeming Love on the book of Hosea. There's so much additional reading you can make on pretty much every single verse of the Bible. And so go in depth, make it personal. Personally invest in the story of Jonah. Ooh, my phone's ringing. One second. Hello? Hey, honey. Hey. Are you filming? Yeah, it's okay. 
I have no idea what I was saying. Make it in depth. Look up commentaries, look up the Greek words, look up context. <clears throat> so you can look up like fictional books on the characters of the Bible. So like Redeeming Love on the book of Hosea. Get in depth, make it personal, get personally invested in the story of these people and in the process of the Bible and the story and the covenants and God's promises to mankind being fulfilled. You can also just research the time and culture. What was first century Jewish culture? What was it like in whatever year BC? You know, look up facts, history, and it will help you better understand the text. And it will also get you personally invested and interested in what you're reading because you're personally invested in the culture and the time and the history. Tip number three, golly, I feel like my voice is giving out. Tip number three is pray for a softened heart. Pray for the Lord to get you interested, to show you something interesting, and begin Bible journaling. So circle the words that stick out to you. Look up the Greek word behind that word. Underline words that are repeated. Begin Bible journaling the text. And so that can mean like meditating on it by making art on the text. If you have a Bible journaling Bible, or it can just look like underlying verse mapping, all those kinds of things. And finally, my fourth tip is to meditate on God's word. So maybe you're reading through, let's keep using Leviticus as an example. You're reading through Leviticus and you're really bored. You're stuck. You're f falling behind on your yearly read through the Bible plan. And you're feeling really discouraged because you just want to read the Bible, but you're stuck in Leviticus, right? What you can do is find um, corresponding verses in the New Testament that show us Christ was the fulfillment of those Levitical laws and memorize those verses. And so when you get discouraged reading after all the Levitical rules and laws and systems and blah, 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 you can recite those verses to yourself, that Jesus is the fulfillment. It will motivate you seeing the big picture, but it will also motivate you and continue to grow you as you meditate on God's word and as you memorize God's word. Maybe you're discouraged because you're stuck in a boring book in the New Testament. Maybe you're in Revelation, you have no idea what you're reading and it's boring and it's weird and it's confusing. Meditate on God's word. Go to those verses in Revelation that hit you, that encourage you and memorize those verses. And when you get discouraged, pull those back out and remind yourself, why you're reading the book. All right, you guys, I hope that this got you hungry and thirsty to run to God's word, to dive in to your daily Bible studies and really head straight first because honestly, it's not how to read the boring parts of the Bible. Our attitude should really be, when is the next time I can read the boring parts of the Bible? <laughs> I pray that this gives you a passion to dig deeper, get impassioned to have in-depth Bible studies, pursuing the Lord, running after his truth, and trusting and knowing that he is so good. So if you don't already have a habit of a daily Bible study, I encourage you to start. There's never a better time to start than now because you'll always regret not starting sooner. And if you already have a daily Bible study routine and you have some tips about how to not get bored in your daily Bible studies, then comment those down below. I would love to hear your tips about how you stay fresh and how you don't get bored. Maybe you use the YouVersion Bible app, maybe you listen to it, or I listen to podcasts about it. Maybe you just, I don't know. So comment down below your ideas. I would love to hear them and I might actually apply them to my own life. So you guys are so encouraging. I love hearing back from you guys. That's probably my favorite part of YouTube is hearing y'all's feedback back. You guys encourage me, you guys challenge me and you guys convict me. And so thank you so much for all of you guys who are so faithful to comment and to ask those thought provoking questions and to encourage and all that love. I really appreciate you guys. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed, go ahead and sit. If you like, uh, if you don't know where to begin in your daily Bible studies, go ahead and check out this playlist. In it, I have a whole series of Bible studies through James. You can just like watch one video a day and that can get you started on having a daily Bible study routine. Like this video if I said anything that encouraged you. I love y'all. Stay faithful. I'll see you on Friday for our Bible study with me, the women of the Bible. Bye.